This is Merlin Glenn, Senior Product Manager with VMware. And this is an overview of the multiple T0 support capability in PKS or Pivotal Container Service 1.3. The intent of the multiple T0 capability is to offer a PKS operator or a service provider a multi-tenant solution. In a multi-tenant solution, Kubernetes clusters are provisioned per tenant. These clusters should have access to a common service provider control plane as well as any other common services to be offered, such as registries. The tenants should also have access to their own private network paths to allow for proper ingress and egress function for their workloads. Lastly, isolation should be achieved so that tenants cannot bridge to other tenants' networks. This is accomplished with PKS and NSXT via a multi-T0 implementation. First, a shared T0 is implemented. The shared T0 will host routes to the shared PKS control plane and other shared services, such as Harbor Docker Registry. Tenants will then be connected to unique T0s through an enter T0 subnet. We can see in this image there is a tenant A and a tenant B T0, each with their own unique CIDR, 10.171 for tenant A and 10.172 for tenant B. The network profile feature in PKS allows for mapping of the appropriate T0s and IP blocks so that at cluster creation time, Bosch can provision the cluster in the correct network topology for the given tenant. And this process can be repeated with multiple network profiles to link to multiple tenant T0s. It is of note that in most service provider topologies, some customers may need to reuse CIDRs. This is because it is common for private RFC CIDRs to be leveraged across many corporate entities or many unique tenants. This topology does support reuse of subnets. Additionally, NSXT BGP route filtering and distributed firewall policy ensure that clusters belonging to tenants are isolated from each other. This does allow, however, for nodes such as the requirement for Bosch to manage nodes for each of our deployed clusters to traverse the shared T0 and access the shared PKS control plane. Similarly, each tenant can have a unique route from their T0 to their private networks for ingress and egress of access to their Kubernetes workloads. Lastly, to ensure that tenant isolation does occur, BGP protocol filtering between the tenant T0s and the shared T0 prevent knowledge of routes to other tenant clusters, as well as distributed firewall policy to ensure that security and isolation is maintained. So let's take a look and see how this is actually implemented in PKS. So let's look at PKS. Leveraging the PKS CLI, we can look at what clusters are already provisioned in our environment. And we can see that there has already been a cluster created for tenant A. So let's look at the NSXT administration console so that we could see how that cluster is linked to the existing T0 implementations. So as we look at our routing tier, we can see that there is a T0 for tenant A and a T0 for tenant B. And that we have pre-existing logical switches and T1 routers that have been linked for our cluster in tenant A. But there exists no logical switching or routing for tenant B clusters yet. We can also look at the IP block and see that we have various subnets that have been provisioned from our 10.171 block for tenant A, yet no subnets for tenant B. 
So let's take a look at how we would create a network profile that would allow us to provision to tenant B's T0. So we can see this JSON file that the PKS CLI will leverage to create a network profile called NP tenant B. And we can see that we have set parameters such as load balancing size small. We have linked to the UUID of our T0 for tenant B, as well as linking to tenant B's IP block, which is the 10.172 block. We can also see that we are provisioning slash 24 from that block and that our pods are set to be routable. We can also assign a, a floating pool ID with IPs that are to be provisioned specifically for ingress and load balancing services for our tenant B clusters. And we can also have all of our master nodes get dynamically added to a network security group that will allow access to our service provider control plane from Kubernetes control components. So now we've created the network profile NP tenant B with our NP tenant B JSON. Next, we will create a cluster for tenant B, and we will leverage the network profile flag with our newly created tenant B network profile. After the cluster has been successfully created, we'll verify its state. We can see that K8's one tenant B has been successfully created with a UUID of 33E63. Now let's look back into the administrative UI of NSXT at our routing tier. And we can see that we now have logical switches and T1s from our new cluster assigned to the tenant B T0. Additionally, as we look at our IP block, we can see that we now also have 10.172 IP addresses associated from that tenant's IP block to our new cluster. 